coffee plus mala plus keys equals road trip. Hello everyone, how are you doing? Um, I'm heading out to Berkeley, go to the Zen Center, Empty Gate Zen Center. I have to deposit a couple checks and check up on a couple of things. I haven't been there in a couple months, I've been very busy. Usually I go there at least once a month, sometimes two times a month if I'm doing a retreat. Well, at least when we did <laughs> in-person retreats or even hybrid retreats, which we're not doing now. Pretty much it's online. So I'm taking you on this road trip. We're on, let's see, 880. We've got about an hour drive. This is take two recording this. <laughs> um, I spent about 10 minutes of talking, recording some footage in the car. And I went to listen back. I pulled off the side of the road to make sure everything was working correctly and there was no audio. So I invested in a um, kind of a lavalier microphone that plugs into this camera and it's not working. I have no idea what it is. Um, hopefully I can get to the bottom of it because I think the audio quali quality is a little bit better. So um, please excuse the audio. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out. I think it picks a little more of the background noise. So bear with me. We'll, we'll do this anyways. <laughs> Which reminds me to thank everybody who's been supporting me on Patreon. I believe we have 16 Patreons or 17. I'm not sure. Um, but I'm super grateful for your support. Um, first of all, it allows me the time to make these videos and do live streams, connect with people from around the world doing one-on-ones, and also investing in equipment. And as you know, my equipment's been failing me lately. So thank you everyone who's been supporting me on Patreon because without you, these videos would not happen. I also want to thank uh, Martin. Some of you know Martin. He's the one who bought the uh, GoPro camera for me to record videos. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be doing these videos, period. So Martin, if you're out there, thank you so much for your, uh, your support from the very beginning and also for supplying the camera. Uh, Martin also had a couple of good ideas. So he'll email me sending me some ideas and his latest idea was podcasts so just to back up a little bit uh, many of you joined us uh, last Sunday for our first live stream listening party so we got together uh, with people from around the world we got to meet people from around the world we got to uh, check in and say hello and see where people are living and we were also listening to the audio version of Zen Mind Beginner's Mind. Many of you know this book if you've been practicing Zen or have heard of Zen you've definitely heard of this book Suzuki Roshi's book and it was kind of an experiment and I thought it went very well I got a lot of good feedback listened to about an hour's worth of the book so it was actually part one of Zen Mind the Beginner's Mind. The, the live stream was about two hours so I think we spent about one hour talking and the, the other hour listening to Zen Mind's Beginner's Mind but I find it very valuable. I mean first of all it was really nice. I haven't read the book myself but it was really nice to listen to the teachings of Suzuki Roshi and kind of seeing how it connects to the way I teach. So most of you know I teach in the Quantum School of Zen and there's a teaching style that we have. So it's really interesting to, to hear another way of expressing the teachings. 
So I found it very valuable just for my own practice and you know, as a teacher too, teaching Zen, just to see his perspective on Zen teachings and also most importantly is how it connects to our everyday lives. So because we had good feedback, um, I'm also going to do a part two of the live stream. So we're going to continue with the book. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when the live stream will be at this moment. Uh, this weekend I have a one day retreat and I'm also giving interviews on Sunday for Empty Gate Zen Center. The following weekend I'm doing a two day retreat for the Quantum School of Zen online Sangha. So I will be leading the first part on Friday and then leading the first part of that retreat on the Saturday. So I'm thinking of doing part two of this Zen Mind Beginner Mind Listening Party live stream the weekend after that. So that's what, three weeks? So if you haven't already, go to uh, jasonquinzen.com, get on the mailing list if you want to be notified about these live streams. But I'm very, I'm looking forward to doing this again and I hope that it's helpful for your own practice and I hope that it can help your life as well. So Martin's idea was to take the live stream from this listening party, the Zen Mind Beginner Mind Listening Party, and put it into a podcast. And I've been toying around with the idea of a podcast. I just haven't had the time to put energy into it. But since uh, the support on Patreon is getting bigger, it's growing, um, I'm starting to look at doing a podcast. And I like Martin's idea. So we would take the audio part of the live stream and put that into the podcast so people can access it. Because I know not everyone maybe watches YouTube. Sometimes it's easier for people to listen to a podcast maybe while they're going to sleep or listen to a podcast while they're driving a car so I, th I thought it was a really good idea of putting this live stream into a podcast I also had the idea of taking some of the Q&A so you know on my YouTube channel I have a series of the called Q&A series which we highlight some of the questions and answers from the Empty Gate Zen Center live stream that we do weekly. So my idea was taking, let's say three or four or more, maybe five of the audio of the videos and putting that into a podcast. So each podcast would have four or five questions and answers from these live streams. So let me know what you think of that idea down in the comments. Um, if it's if it's something that people would like, then I will do it. And again, like I said, since the support of Patreon is growing, it's allowing me the time to actually do it. So I'm going to start checking it out and seeing what I need to do to set that up. Just let me know in the comments if you think it's a good idea. As I'm driving to Berkeley, I feel a little sore in my lip. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little blister. How do you think I got this blister? <laughs> I got this blister from cooking. So my one of my wife's favorite dishes, this Thai dish called Pad Siu, it's a noodle dish. So I decided to make this dish for her. And it made me realize about meditation techniques. So people do meditation for all kinds of different reasons. Some people use it as a for therapeutic reasons. Some people use it to go to some different realms and things like that but when we're talking about Buddhism and Zen usually there's two types of meditation practices 
there's samadhi practice and there's clear mind practice. And I'll give you an example of both. So samadhi practice just means one point. Sometimes it can be looked at as a concentration practice. For example, perhaps during sitting meditation, you recite a mantra. I'll give the, an example of the Gate Gate Para Gate Parasamgate Bodhisattva. That's the uh, mantra at the end of the Heart Sutra. So some people do that as a meditation practice. So during the Samadhi practice, you're just doing that mantra. So your mind and the mantra is just one thing. It's not about what you hear in the moment. It's not about what you see in the moment. It's not about what you smell in the moment. Just the mantra. Gate, gate, para, gate, parasam, gate, bodhisattva, gate, gate. So that means if there's a bird chirping outside, only gate, gate, para, gate, parasam, gate, bodhisattva. It's not about what you see, what you smell. Just the mantra mind, the mantra become one thing. So it's called samadhi practice. The practice that I teach and recommend, which comes from the style in the quantum school of Zen, is clear mind practice. Where even if you're doing the same mantra, you're using the mantra to help just reflect this moment exactly how it is. So if you're sitting, you're doing the mantra, gate, gate, para, gate, parasam, gate, bodhisattva. You're using the mantra to just see in this moment, to just hear in the moment, to just smell in the moment, just to perceive everything clearly right now in this moment. So maybe one moment you hear a bird chirping outside. Next moment, you smell the incense. Next moment, you feel the pain in your leg. The next, the next moment, you perceive thinking. So it's just reflecting everything like a mirror. So you often hear me talk about our original enlightened nature, this clear mind, this Buddha nature, our original mind like a mirror, right? It just reflects everything as it is. And to me, I find that very practical in our lives from moment to moment. So right now, I'm driving. Clear mind meditation is very important when you're driving a car. I'm looking at the road, looking at the cars in front of me, looking in my mirrors, looking at the cars behind me. I'm listening for horns or sirens, just reflecting the moment as it is so I can help the situation that I'm in, which is driving. Clear mind meditation is also helpful, perhaps when you're listening to a loved one or a friend that you're using the meditation technique to just listen to them. Samadhi practice, only gate gate parasam gate bodhisattva. Somebody's talking, only gate gate para gate parasam gate bodhisattva. I find this clear mind meditation very helpful to function clearly in our lives. So when I was cooking, I had a samadhi kind of mind, samadhi meditation mind. <laughs> Meaning I was just cooking, nothing else. So what happened was I was cooking this dish and I put the sauce in, I put the noodles in and to see if the noodles were ready, I tasted it. And one of the noodles got stuck on my lip and started burning. But I didn't even feel it at that moment because I was in the deep concentration of just cooking. There was nothing else happening. So I didn't feel it until minutes later, <laughs> boom, it kind of snapped out of it and I felt the burn. I was like, wow, right? So this was the result of that. 
if I had Samadhi mind when I was driving, as I'm driving right now, it w I wouldn't. Um, it wouldn't be very helpful to me and the people around me. So if I had a clear mind during cooking, then every moment, smell what's being cooked, seeing what's being cooked, tasting what's being cooked, feel the hot noodle on my lip, pull it off right away. And in the next moment, continue cooking. So just wanted to make that teaching point because I kind of get this question a lot about samadhi practice and clear mind practice and how they are different. Both, both have their benefits, but I find that the clear mind meditation is the most helpful to live our lives clearly in each moment. All right, I'm going to continue driving, and I will catch up with you a little bit later. Alright, this is Owen. Say hello to everyone. Hello everyone. He's the caretaker now for Empty Gates and Center. Yes, I live here. Good, yeah. yeah. Well, when was I living here? 2008 to 2012. And then you know, we had a few other people been living here for kind of, uh, yeah, how long have you been living for here? For October 2021 <laughs> to, yeah, that's Good. it. Welcome. <laughs> so the caretaker takes care of the place. And helps out with practice when you have to. Here we go, the meditation hall. Many of you have seen this before. Basically, I'm just going to the office here to deposit some checks, take a look at things. This is the office. It's also the caretaker's bedroom. I lived up there for four years. Got a little ladder to get up there. That's where he sleeps. All right, so I'm gonna do a couple things and move on to the next adventure. All right, we just took care of some business at Empty Gate Zen Center. Um, now I'm, I'm gonna, you know, driving an hour here and then spending like 20 minutes doing work. Uh, there's no reason to just go back home. So what I'm deciding to do right now at this moment is to drive to uh, the water, I guess. Uh, anyways, when I lived here back in 2008, I didn't have a car, I just had a bicycle. And after the retreats, I would drive to this area and check out the water and the sunset. Uh, so that's where we're going to go today. It's cloudy right now, and plus it's afternoon, so there's not going to be any sunset. But there's no sun, period. Which is amazing right now because there's water on the ground, which means it rained here. And that's very rare at least right now in California, so we're very excited to see rain. But let me take you to the waterfront.
Okay, we made it. We are at the Berkeley Marina. Um, probably can't see back there. There's a lot of boats and things like that. Um, here's a restaurant. Now, I would go there when I lived in at the Zen Center. I would go to this place after the retreats to kind of, again, look out into this wonderful view. And it usually was kind of in the evening when the sun was setting. So you can see that it can be quite amazing. And then later, let's see, after I was a monk, my wife and I would go here sometimes to have dinner, spend some time by the water. Let's just take you for a little tour. long pier here. I believe I've walked down to that. It's been a long time. It looks like it's closed. Yeah, let's see what's happening. Uh, safety issues. <laughs> the structural safety issues. So uh, you're not allowed, but this pier, as you can see, not sure. I can't really zoom in here. But it's pretty long. I would say half a mile. Maybe longer. And at the very end, you'll see Alcatraz. It's the island there. It's very cloudy today, which again, very unusual. But if you look off into the distance, you will see San Francisco. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Well, this is as far as I can zoom in. So if you're watching this on a big screen, you might be able to see some of the skyscrapers there in San Francisco. You have the Bay Bridge, which goes to Oakland and Berkeley. And you cannot see the Golden Gate Bridge, which would be straight back there. The sounds of the ocean, it's a beautiful day. I spent a lot of time here when I was a monk, so you probably read this in my book if you've read it. <laughs> I talked about how, um, you know, I lived with my parents for a long time until I was like 20. I moved to Seattle with the high school sweetheart. We eventually got married, so I lived with her. After we separated, I moved right into the Zen Center in Seattle. So I was always around people. Then after Seattle, I moved to the Zen Center in Providence. So I've always been around people. So when I moved to Berkeley at the Zen Center, as you saw in the last clips, um, I was by myself. I lived up in the loft and it was the first time that I actually ever lived by myself. So that was a very interesting experience. You know, uh, I always say that it's really important to be able to live with people, to um, function together, uh, and, and harmony and but also it's very important to be able to be by yourself right because you it's usually that we don't like people and we just want to be by ourselves or we have to be around people because maybe we're not comfortable with ourselves or too lonely or, or don't like ourselves whatever the reason is right so I always find that it's a good balance to be able to live with people is no problem and to be able to live by yourself is no problem so uh, that four-year period when I lived at the Zen Center, um, it was a good chance to get to know this Jason Quinn. I still don't know who he is, but we did spend a lot of time here uh, investigating that question. So anyways, that's all I have to see, um, show you here. It's not much happening. Restaurant's closed. It's too expensive too, I think, so I couldn't afford it anyways. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is uh, hopefully take you to... Bobby G's Pizza. So this is a place that I used to take my teacher. Uh, I've been there with my wife. I've been there with my kids. I've been there with many different people. It's at Master Bong Song. It's uh, one of the best pizza places 
in the Bay Area, in my opinion. I'm going to see if they're open. I have no idea, but we're going to take a drive there and get a quick bite to eat. Even though I'm not super hungry, I uh, just wanted to give you a little quick tour where I used to hang out here in the Berkeley area. So let's go to Bobby G's Pizza. Well, here we are. So Bobby G's Pizza is closed. So I said, well, let me go to my favorite Mexican place. Right. When I lived here, I used to go to. They have the best burritos, I think, in Berkeley. They're also not open. <laughs> so it looks like uh, no lunch today. Uh, but I wanted to share with you a koan. I have a couple videos about how we use koans in the Quantum School of Zen. So check that out if you haven't seen it. Uh, but this koan is with uh, Zen Master Mangong. So as you know, the founder of the Quantum School of Zen is Zen Master Sung Song. His teacher was Zen Master Kobang, and Kobang's teacher was Zen Master Mongong. So a monk went up to Zen Master Mongong and asked him, where is the Buddha Dharma? And Mongong replied, it's right in front of you. And the student said, well, you say it's in front of me, but I cannot see. Mongong replied, well, you have eye, so you cannot see. And the monk replied, well, do you see, master? And Mongong said, well, you have I, so you cannot see. But if you have you, it's even more difficult to see. The monk replied, if there's no I and no you, then who is talking? And then <laughs> he perceived this enlightened nature. So it's a very interesting exchange and it kind of ties into what I was saying earlier about uh, being by yourself and also functioning with other people. So I always say that our original mind is like a clear mirror, as I mentioned earlier. But if we're clouded, if our mind is clouded, then we can't see Buddha nature or the Buddha Dharma or enlightened nature at all. If we have I if we have good and bad, like and dislike, we cannot see. And if we're looking at other people, sometimes we'll do this too, it's like, well, that person's enlightened or that person seems clear. If we have you, it's even more difficult to see. That means there's even a bigger cloud in front of this original mirror. So this Kongan's interesting because it asks, um, if there's no I and no you, how do you see? So if we take away this concept of I, take away this concept of you, take away this opposites thinking of good and bad, right and wrong, then everything we see is Buddha nature. Everything we hear is Buddha nature. We also have another question. So what did this monk attain? Because he said, if there's no I, no you, then who is speaking? And then something happened. He realized something. So what did this monk actually realize? And this is really important, right? This is really about our own enlightened nature. And again, I've said this many times. We can talk about it. We can teach it. We can understand it. But really, if we take all of that away, then we actually have this experience of it. So let me know in the comments uh, how you would respond to these two questions uh, koan practice is very, very important in Zen tradition, especially in our tradition. There's many ways to experience this enlightened nature, but we use koans as a technique to really pierce through our understanding and have an actual experience that we can share with other people, right? We can use it in our lives to not only help ourselves, but everyone around us. So those are my thoughts today. I'm going to drive back home with an empty stomach. I hope you all are well. And I'll see you soon.